Welcome back. I'm attorney Andrew Bethel of Bethel Law, where we talk estate planning, finances, real estate, and taxes. Today, we're gonna to tackle a pretty big subject, reverse mortgages and how they fit in your estate plan, especially if you're living here in California. If you're not familiar with what a reverse mortgage is, then don't worry, come with me. We're gonna walk through this together step by step. So let's dive in. So let's start with the basics. What the hell is a reverse mortgage? Well, a reverse mortgage is a loan that allows homeowners age 62 or older to convert a part of their home's equity, that's the value of your home minus any loans against it, into cash. Instead of you paying the lender like a traditional mortgage, the lender pays you as a loan. The amount you can borrow depends on several factors, including your home's value, your age, and current interest rates. Now you may be wondering, how do I get people to give me money? Or in other words, who qualifies for a reverse mortgage? As I mentioned before, generally, you need to be at least age 62 or older, live in the home as your primary residence, and have significant equity in the home, which is kind of the point. You need something to borrow against. And lastly, your home also needs to meet certain condition standards. No reverse mortgaging that sheet metal shack on your vacant lot out in the desert. Let's talk about your payment options with the reverse mortgage. You can choose to receive payments as a lump sum, regular monthly payments, a line of credit, or even a mix of these. Of course, which option you pick is going to heavily depend on you. What's your plan for the money and how much you can actually afford to borrow? At this point, you're probably wondering, when do I have to pay this back? An excellent question. The loan is typically repaid when the last surviving borrower dies, sells the home, or moves out of the home for 12 consecutive months. So if you have one person, it's easy to determine. If you have two borrowers, it means the survivor won't be on the hook for a debt repayment the moment the other borrower passes away. Typically, in that case, it's their spouse. If you live in California, there are some additional things you should know. For example, California law requires a seven day cooling off period from the time the lender provides the reverse mortgage disclosures. This period allows you to think about your decision without any pressure from the lender. Plus, California requires counseling for borrowers to ensure they understand the implications of the loan itself, which can be done either in person or over the phone. The state wants you to know what you're getting into because it's not free money. Your house is on the line here. Now, if you thought we're only going to talk about real estate loans and not have me evangelize living trusts, then you must be new here, which in that case, hit the like button and please subscribe. We recently hit a thousand subscribers and are extremely grateful for that. But what if you have a reverse mortgage and want to put your home into a revocable living trust? Of course, I'm going to tell you, yes, put your home in trust. Just because you have a reverse mortgage doesn't mean the house won't force your estate to go through probate court in order to take care of it. Watch my video on dodging probate. Your family already has repayment of the reverse mortgage loan to worry about, so don't bootstrap them with the high cost and headache of probate on top of it all. However, you may need to let your lender know and get their approval to put the house in trust. If the home is transferred to a trust and the borrower is not the manager of the trust, the trustee, or the beneficiary of the trust, this could potentially violate the terms of the reverse mortgage and cause the loan to become due. Essentially, they treat it as if you had sold or gifted the property to someone else. If it's your trust that you set up, you manage it and benefit from the assets in the trust, then a property with a reverse mortgage shouldn't raise an issue because the trust is still you. Watch our video where I explain what a living trust is as if we were sitting face to face. Before we wrap up, let's talk about the pros and cons of reverse mortgages. On the positive side, they can provide a steady income during retirement, the money received isn't taxable income, it's a loan, and you don't have to make monthly payments towards the loan balance. However, reverse mortgages also have their drawbacks. They often have high upfront cost, they reduce the equity in your home, and they can be hard to understand and lead to foreclosure if you fail to meet the terms of the loan, like paying property taxes and homeowner's insurance. And lastly, the funds from a reverse mortgage could potentially affect your eligibility for certain government assistance programs, whether it be Medicare or Medi-Cal for us here in California. All right, we've covered a lot. I hope this gives you a clearer understanding of reverse mortgages and how they work in the context of estate planning. Always remember, when it comes to important financial decisions, it's crucial to do your research, ask lots of questions, and consult with knowledgeable professionals. If you have any questions on this or any other topics, then please drop a comment below and I'll do my best to cover them in future videos. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to our channel for more easy to understand insights into estate planning, taxes, real estate, and finances. Watch our last video where I break down living trust for you as I do for all my clients or check out this other great one.